We all know that keeping our kitchen clean and organized can be a challenging task, but fear not. In this video, I'm going to provide you with some effective tips and strategies to stay motivated and to maintain a sparkling clean kitchen. Finding motivation to clean can be a challenge, but there are several strategies that you can try. One effective approach is to create a pleasant atmosphere while you clean. You can do this by playing upbeat music, or you can listen to your favorite podcast, or you can even involve a family member or a friend. These things can really make the task more enjoyable. So my motivation for today is listening to one of my favorite inspirational and motivational speakers, Mel Robbins. Now she does have some pretty spicy language sometimes, but she gets the point across perfectly. So as we delve deeper into cleaning motivation, I'm going to go ahead and draw some inspiration for Mel Robbins and her insightful series, Here's Exactly What to Do. In the very first episode, Mel shares some invaluable advice on how to overcome procrastination and to find motivation to tackle challenging tasks, including cleaning. You've heard me say this many times over, but today we're going to hear it straight from Mel Robbins. So in her series, she says, when it comes to cleaning or any task that seems overwhelming, it's crucial to break it down into small, manageable steps. Take a moment to identify the specific areas that need attention in your kitchen. By breaking down the task into smaller parts, you're going to find it much easier to get started. If I could, I'd make me feel less Something in my brain causes stress So come on, make me feel different You wanna hold, don't hold back No, oh, your little drama's got me mad And I don't need to tell you facts You know Okay, so I'm filling my sink with some hot water and then I'm going to throw in this dish pod. I like to put in my cast iron grates that go on my stove. I like to soak that in, the, um, in this hot soapy water. It really helps to break down the oil so that way I'm not having to scrub as much. As you can see, I've got a lot of grease on these grates. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let those soak in that um, hot soapy water. And it's going to do a lot of the work for me. So another powerful technique that Mel Robin uses is the five second rule. Now this is another book of hers that I've read. So whenever you find yourself hesitating or making excuses to avoid cleaning, simply count down from five, four, three, two, one, and then take immediate action. Now this simple countdown interrupts your mind's natural tendency to overthink and it gives you the push that you're going to need to get started.
I really like these XO brushes for detail work. It's got a soft end on one side of it so that if you need to get in there and, you know, scrape, but you don't want to use your nail or something like that, that might scratch things up. Or if the brush is too um, hard to use, then you can use that little softer end. Um, and it really helps to get things up. So I really like these brushes. Okay, to continue on with what Mel Robbins is saying here in my earpiece, she's talking about sustaining motivation throughout the cleaning process. And she says, consider implementing rewards and incentives. Now, you can create a checklist and you can go ahead and reward yourself after completing each task. Or you can designate a special treat once the entire kitchen is clean. Now, these rewards provide positive reinforcements and they make the process so much more enjoyable. While in Target, I got a wild hair and decided to pick up this Method Stainless Steel Cleaner and Polish. I love most of Method's um, products, but this one is not my favorite. Um, my favorite by far is the Wyman's um, Stainless Steel um, Cleaning Cloths. Um, and I have a whole package of those. Actually, I have three or four um, packages of those. So why I thought that I needed to pick this up, I have no idea. But it's definitely not my favorite and I won't be buying it again. I look up to the sky to remind me I look left, I look right behind me In one moment you were there When you're cleaning your stove top like this, you really need to be careful for those little pokey things that are sticking out, those little white things that you see sticking out. Those things hurt like the Dickens. Um, I've hit my thumb on one, and I've also cut my, um, my wrist on one by going over it. There's like a little metal probe, there, or probe, 
probe yes a little metal probe that sticks out of that and if you go over it too hard and you get yourself with that oh my goodness you can get a, a pretty serious cut Around in circles I get so dizzy till I can see Right, so Mel Robbins says, remember, mindset is everything. Instead of viewing cleaning as a chore, reframe it as an opportunity to create space that nurtures and supports you. Visualize how you're going to feel once the kitchen is clean and organized, and then use that vision as fuel to propel yourself forward. That's left in a love that's gone silent Can't look for the ways cause we're just so blinded Tell me to hear when I ask you to listen We're on the same side But you're making me the villain Have I grown too comfortable? Thought we were unshakable But when you started leading on somebody else I didn't know you Gave me a sign, now my shoulders are closed We're on the nights, we're at each other's throats Why? So I want you to remember that motivation isn't something that happens to you. Rather, it's the active process that you create within yourself. So you won't always feel motivated to clean. In fact, unless you're watching a lot of cleaning motivational videos, the majority of the time you won't feel motivated to clean. But that's okay. So go ahead and take the lead in creating your own motivation. And then you're going to witness the transformation that occurs in your kitchen and beyond. So as Mel Robbins wisely says, Motivation is not something that you wait for, it's something you create. So go ahead and start creating your own motivation today, and then you can embrace that power of a clean and organized kitchen. Treat us like a business, chop tongue, cut like a knife, this isn't us. I don't recognize the me that loves you, guess I'm done. Have I grown too comfortable, thought we were unshakable. But when you started leading on somebody else, I didn't know you. Gave me a sign, now my shoulders are closed We're on the nights, we're at each other's throats Why?
see how these XO brushes just fits right there into the crevices? Like I said, these things are great brushes. And I've had these um, quite a while, and I do use them on this cast iron. And you know cast iron can be really rough on the bristles of um, brushes like this. But these have held up. These are really good brushes. If I remember, I will go ahead and link them down below. Um, I'm pretty sure that I might have them in my Amazon storefront. So if for some reason I don't get it linked, go ahead and check my Amazon storefront and see if um, they are in there. I'm pretty sure that they are. That we're playing this playing game oh, oh. We were so out of touch So far apart So far apart Then way more than wrong look at these Look at these scars We're forgetting our fighting Forgetting our fighting No wrongs that we're riding no wrong. It's a shame, it's a shame That we're playing this playing game We were so out of touch So far apart So as I'm cleaning this kitchen, I'm waiting for a phone call that I'm going to have with um, a doctor. We're going to have a Zoom call. So I'm going to be talking to you guys in just a little bit about some medical things that I've got going on, about some testing that I had done, and about some um, protocols that I'm going to be doing to try to help with some of the issues that I've been having. I always give away too much. Mm. It's like I've got no sense of touch. I'm always pouring out my heart No little by little here I'm always pushing things too far Two, five, six, ten drinks at the bar No boundaries, I get too close No little by little here Cause I give my all I'm going to go ahead and use the towel and hand dry all this cast iron, but sometimes I'll just go ahead and turn on the burners and just heat everything up and burn off all the water. You really don't want to leave water on cast iron because as you know, it can rust. Um, I have a grandson who thought that this was the sink. He was just a little guy and he reached his hand up here and thought it was a sink and he threw his cup into what he thought was the sink, but it was actually my um, stove top. And I didn't know that it happened. So it did um, cause rust um, on the grates. Um, you know, I was definitely able to get it up. It's not that big of a deal, but you can get it up. But if you don't want any rust, don't let water sit on these grates. Um, get down there on the bottom. Be sure you get it wiped up before you set it down on top of your stainless steel stovetop. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe it off. But you can just go ahead and turn on all the burners, heat it up, and it will just um, dry everything up out of those um, cast iron grates. I'm going to give my all because I don't care. that I can, I can be. Let me fly, let me fly, let me fly into the sky. Let me be all I can be. Let me be all I can Be 
This right here is another cleaner that I picked up um, knowing that it's a good product. However, even though it's a very good product, I don't really um, enjoy it here in my sink. It leaves it pretty gritty. It takes a lot of work to get all that grit um, out of the sink, but it does do a really good job at cleaning the sink. So if you really need a good deep clean of your sink, go ahead and use this um, scrub daddy paste. Um, I use it every so often, especially when I'm zone cleaning in here. Um, I'll come in here and give this a really good scrub with the power paste. But like I said, it's not really my favorite. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and head into my pantry. As you can see, it's not really that big of a mess. I do have a lot of shopping bags down there on the ground that I need to take back to um, HEB. Um, they have a little drop off that you can, you know, drop off all your extra bags. Um, I have an overabundance of bags. I don't know why, but I do. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take the things off the shelf. I like to do one shelf at a time, maybe two shelves at a time. Um, I'm not going to pull all this stuff out and set it on my counter. Um, that's, I really don't need to do that because everything in here is very organized because I set up the systems for it to be organized. So all I need to do is just bring out the containers and organize what's inside the containers and then just wipe off the shelf and put everything back. Okay, so let's face it. A messy pantry can quickly drain our energy and make it difficult to prepare meals. That's why I took a lot of um, time to get into my pantry and really find a system that works for me. Um, I'm going to link some um, videos above and also at the end of this video to show you how I implemented all these systems um, into my pantry and into my kitchen to make cooking and baking and all that just much more enjoyable because everything is organized. Is it Pinterest perfect? No, it does not need to be Pinterest perfect. It just needs to work for you. And this right here works for me. All these little baskets and containers, I treat them almost as if they're drawers um, on the shelf. That way I can pull them out and get whatever I need out of it. 
Um, I also have everything, you know, like items together. However, I don't have everything all labeled. I don't have the baskets all labeled because um, I put different things in the baskets. But I do have some containers that I do have those labeled because I use all those products very often. So I go ahead and label those. But other than that, um, I really like just to have a nice organized area for um, all of my food. This right here is for... Um, the kids treats these are the, their little snack drawer they come in here and get their little snackies um, they really love to come to Grammy and Papa's because we have li lots of nice yummy snacks in there for them I also have a drawer full of snacks in the refrigerators some of their cold snacks Now, it took me a couple of tries to figure out what systems was going to work best for me in my pantry and in my drawers. So don't be discouraged if you, you know, went and you got all these baskets and you, you know, worked in your pantry and everything looked great, but things didn't work out. That happens a lot. You just have to find the right system for you. So I'm going to post my video um, again above and at the end of this video so you can go see it because I'm sure that you're going to find some motivation in there of some things that will work in your pantry or in your drawers. Actually, you know what? I have a playlist of videos of four different pantries that um, we overdid. Um, I went to each of my daughter's houses and we overdid each of their pantries and then I also did mine. So I'm also going to link the um, four videos for you. Um, you're going to get to go into each one of my daughter's houses and you get to see um, the different pantries and how we organize those pantries. So I will link that playlist at the end of this video for you to go see. You have the time of your life every single night the confetti's raining down You put your hands to the sky, center of the crowd, you're the talk of the town. And I tell myself I don't want that, what glitters sink gold. I tell myself I don't need it, cause I'm fine on my own. But I hate being on the outside looking through it. So to create motivation, you need to start by clarifying your goals and identifying why cleaning the kitchen is so important to you. Whether it's for a healthier living environment or more enjoyable cooking experience or even a sense of accomplishment, connecting with your underlining reason can ignite a powerful drive for you to take action. And then next, you're going to need to establish a routine that's going to incorporate cleaning tasks into your, into your daily and your weekly schedule. So consistency is the key when it comes to staying motivated. By making cleaning a regular part of your routine, you eliminate the need for the constant decision making, and then you rely on the power of the habit that you built.
Are you like me and do you go ahead and peel a lot of the um, skins off of the onion? I don't like all those papery skins all over everything. It just makes a huge mess. Now, of course, I don't get down to the bare onion because you don't want to do that. But I only leave a couple of layers of the um, little flaky skin on there because it really does just make a huge mess, as you can see. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use this space right here to put all the cans so that way I don't have to take everything out and put it into the kitchen. I can just put it over here. I'm going to clean the spot where the cans go and then I can put the cans back over here. Here are those chocolate treats I'm always telling you guys about. Um, these are the ones that we get from Costco, and my husband and I always treat ourselves to one of those treats a night. They are so delicious. So I've decided to go ahead and turn these containers this other way. Um, it just gives me more room, a little space right there that I can add um, a few extra little things. Cause the way it feels is almost real. Yeah, I'm made for loving, I'm made for loving. I know it looks like I'm adding new beans on top of old beans, but actually I'm not. Um, the beans at the bottom of the container are the same beans that came out of this bag. So I'm just refilling um, from the same bag. Anyways, we eat a lot of black beans um, here in the house. But as you can see, I did fill it too high and I'm having a hard time getting, getting the measuring cup to fit back in there. But I do end up getting it. Lately I've 
I've been going through some hard stuff. Getting knocked down, getting right back up. Only mistake I made was thinking you would have my back, but it's one way track. That's right, you know I've had enough. Your bad behavior is what I'm worth. No, that's right. No, I've had enough. You don't see it, but I. All on me, forgetting you have a responsibility to wait that you don't care cause your anxiety isn't reason enough to be acting so rough. That's right, no, I've had enough. Your bad behavior is the what I'm worth. No, that's right, no, I've had enough. You don't see it. Well, look at the amount of dust that has gotten down here on the floor. If you see right there in the um, in the corner of the baseboard, um, that's where there's a little bit of gel stuff. Like when the bug guy comes, he puts a little bit of gel at the bottom of that. So that way if any ants um, crawl through it, it um, they eat at it and then they take it back to their home. So that's what that little spot is down there. They just keep reapplying that gel stuff um, right there in the corner. I'm going to go ahead and use my handy dandy e-cloth mop and I'm just going to give this area a good little mopping.
This is the step stool that I keep in there. I use this thing religiously to get up in my cabinets. As you know, I'm short, um, so I have to use this stool quite often. So I just keep it right there in the pantry, pull it out when I need it. Okay, so that was quick and it's nice and clean now, smells fresh, everything is in order. I just love when everything is all back in its place um, here in the, in the pantry. Just looks nice. I do need to get some more canned food. Um, other than that, I think everything is totally restocked. Um, it looks like I need some potatoes, um, things like that. But Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and sit down and get ready for my Zoom call. Um, I have some paperwork and some labs and things like that that I want to get put into this binder. So I am currently on a six-month program um, to help figure out what is going on possibly with my glucose. Um, I don't have diabetes, but what they think that I might have is what's called um, reactive hypoglycemia. So when I eat certain foods, we're going to um, pinpoint what those foods are, but when I eat certain foods, um, apparently my sugars go up and then they drop sharply down, um, very low. And I get very shaky, panicky, brain fog, um, sweaty, my heart is pounding, um, I feel like I have to go out and walk, um, you know, and like walk it off. Um, it's, it's very unpleasant. Many of you have seen me going through this um, because I do oftentimes get on, on Instagram and talk to you guys while I'm having these episodes. So while I was on TikTok, I found this doctor who was talking about reactive hypoglycemia. I'd never heard of it, but when he started talking about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, he is talking to me. So I reached out to him and he has a program that he works with people to um, figure out, you know, what's going on with their systems. So I'm in the program now. Um, they sent me one of those continuous glucose monitors that I have put onto the back of my arm um, in the video. I don't have it yet, but I've, I've since have it on the back of my arm now and it's continuously um, watching my blood sugars and it alerts me when things are going up or down um, you know, and lets me know what I've eaten, things like that. I, I track everything. So I'm, you know, I'm going through the program. I'm going to be doing the blood sugar things, but also I'm going to be doing a liver detox, which takes, um, I think about two or three weeks to do it. And then I also need to do a, um, where it heals your gut and things like that. Um, like for leaky gut, um, you know, you know, we checked, we made sure that I didn't have celiac, um, you know, other things, other labs that I had checked for stomach things that I don't have any of those things. So um, we probably just need to get in there and really start focusing on healing my gut, um, also doing the liver detox, and then figuring out what's going on with my glucose. So I just wanted to um, let you guys know because you guys will be noticing changes in me. Obviously, I'm going to have the glucose monitor on my arm. Um, you know, when you see me, um, I, I know I'll be getting questions about that. So I wanted to let you know what that was. And, um, you know, you'll probably see some weight changes. I'm not doing this for weight loss, but it's going to be a natural, you know, byproduct of, um, you know, working on your blood sugars, carbohydrates, things like that. So, you know, it, it's welcome for sure, but it's not what I'm doing it for. I'm really doing it for my health and my um, trying to figure out what these, these blood sugar issues are. Again, it's not diabetes, but it could possibly be um, non-diabetic non hypo, no, non-diabetic reactive hypoglycemia. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Anyways, so I just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you guys know what's going on, let you know that yes, I'm okay, um, and, and let you know what this thing is on my arm.
But I'm sharing all this over there on Instagram. So if you want to know more of what's going on my day to day, the findings, um, things like that, go ahead and follow me over there on Instagram and um, you can get caught up and um, stay caught up with everything that's going on. So we're back here in the kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and clean out the little vacuum that I've been using. Um, gets a lot of little dust and things like that in the filter here. And all you got to do is just rinse it off and, um, you know, let it set out to dry before you put it back together and use it. So I'm going to get that cleaned off. I'm also going to use the um, cleaning hack for the counters, the Swiffer hack um, for the counters. Love that hack. Been um, using it ever since. All right, so lastly about cleaning motivation, I want you to celebrate your progress and your small victories along the way. So I want you to recognize and appreciate the effort that you put into cleaning your kitchen. Go ahead and treat yourself to a moment of relaxation or you can reward yourself with something you enjoy. By acknowledging your achievements, what you're doing is you're reinforcing the positive association with cleaning and you're boosting your motivation to continue cleaning. I want you to remember that motivation is not a passive force that happens to you. It's an active force that you can create within yourself by clarifying your goals, establishing routines and celebrating the progress. You'll generate the motivation necessary to keep your kitchen clean and inviting. Okay, friends, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. And I'm going to see you again in next Sunday's video. Until then, stay blessed, my friends.